let's take a look at how professional framers finish off their mounted artwork. Most professionally mounted artwork has backing paper applied to it. To do this, apply double stick tape all around the back of the frame. Double stick tape and their dispensing guns can be found at most art supply and craft stores. Next, flip the frame over and set it on top of the backing paper. Use a sharp knife to roughly remove the excess paper. Be careful not to cut into the frame. Now flip the frame over again and crease the overhanging paper that remains. Finally, use an edge trimming knife or a craft knife with a straight edge to trim the paper back past the edge of the frame by approximately one eighth of an inch. Edge trimming knives can be found at most art supply and craft stores. To add a hanging wire to the frame, measure down about one third of the frame on each side and mark. Adding rubber bumpers to the bottom corners of the frame will help make the frame hang properly on the wall while also keeping the frame straight. Also, because the bumpers hold the artwork away from the wall, they help keep discoloration from occurring on the wall behind the artwork. Next, attach a ring hanger to each side of the frame at your marked locations. Finally, stretch hanging wire across the back of the artwork from ring hanger to ring hanger. Secure the wire at each end following the pattern shown. Now that's a professionally framed piece of art. Now let's take a look at some techniques used by professional framers on how to properly mount and glaze your framed artwork. The term glazing refers to protecting your artwork with glass. Plus, we'll show you some tips on how to tell the difference between various types of mat boards and moldings. There are all kinds of methods used to mount the artwork into the bevel cut mat. Here is a very common way the professional framers mount artwork to ensure that it stays flat and does not become buckled or damaged over time. Commonly known as T-hinge mounting, this technique is used when the window of the artwork is slightly smaller than the artwork itself. Using framers tape, cut off tabs of tape and apply them vertically to the top edge of the artwork about two inches from the corners. Make sure you are using an acid-free mounting tape. Then, carefully place the mat, color side up, onto the artwork to attach the tape. Secure the tape firmly. Framers tape or mounting tape is available at most art supply and craft stores. Next, each tab of tape is crossed with an additional tab of tape to form the shape of the letter T. These additional tabs greatly reinforce the hinges. Only two hinge tabs of tape are used against the artwork. The artwork is not taped along the full length of the top, nor is it taped along the sides or bottom. The artwork simply hangs in the mat opening by the tape hinges. The reason for this is twofold. First, because we want to conserve the artwork, we want to minimize the amount of adhesive we put in contact with it. Second, it's the nature of art on paper that it will breathe. That is, it expands and contracts according to temperature and humidity levels. Restricting this natural freedom of movement can cause buckled or damaged artwork. So remember, proper hinging is key to preserving the artwork and keeping it looking beautiful for years. You must properly clean your glass before loading your artwork into your frame. Take your sized piece of glass and carefully clean it using cloth gloves so as not to leave fingerprints. Apply a non-ammonia based glass cleaner liberally to one side of the glass and give it a few seconds to let the solvents break down the dirt and oils. Wipe the glass with a clean cloth rag, but avoid wiping it completely dry. Leave the glass slightly moist and let the air dry it the rest of the way. Repeat this for the other side of the glass as well. 
Do not use paper towels as the paper increases the static charge and will immediately attract dust and lint. Once your glass is properly clean on both sides, you are ready to load your frame. Deciding the color of the mat board to use is up to you, but deciding the type of mat board to use is also an important choice. The most common type of mat board used by framers is the standard thickness four-ply buffered acid-free mat board. Paper comes from trees, so it naturally has some active acidity in it. But the acid is neutralized with a buffering agent during manufacturing that prevents it from causing damage to the artwork. Moving slightly up the scale, we come to a type of mat board that is made from cotton, which naturally has no acid. However, the colored paper surface is most likely a buffered, acid-free paper product. So this type of mat board is made from two different cotton and wood component types. This cotton-based mat board is used when only a naturally acid-free product can be in contact with the artwork. Another type of mat board used for priceless pieces or items displayed in museums is a 100% cotton-based product referred to as conservation, archival, or museum board. This mat board is usually very limited in colors and tends to be much thicker than standard thickness mat board. It also tends to be quite expensive compared to standard thickness mat board, but is perfect for a dramatic professional appearance. For an even more dramatic look, colored core mat board is available, such as black core mat board. Black core mat board is popular for matting and framing black and white photography or other instances where the contrast difference complements the art piece. There are many types of moldings available to use. Remember that the Logan do-it-yourself framing tool system accepts up to two and one half inch molding, so you have plenty of variety and styles to choose from. Common molding styles include natural wood finish colors, black, white, various colors, and even unfinished versions that you can stain yourself. Another popular style of molding is gilded with gold or silver foil for that antique look. Remember, the mat and frame are there to complement the artwork, not overpower it, so choose carefully. At the same time, though, remember that there are no rules when it comes to choosing matting and molding. It's up to your creativity, so be creative and do what looks good to you.